Hello, everybody. Hello, friends. Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 62. 62. Yeah, what's the topic? This is the fifth dimension. Ooh, it's kind of like, reminds me of the sci-fi. Totally. Feels like, like when you say that. Yeah. But it's a cool topic. It is. It's another wormhole. Oh, yeah. But it's it really goes with what's going on right now. It's important. It, it was really something we needed to talk about. I agree. Yes. Cool. Well, before we jump into it, how about anything from last week? I have a few things. First of all, last week we did Nostradamus, uh, Prophecies by Nostradamus, and that had a great response. It was, in its first week, the highest listened to episode that we've had. Wow. Yeah. People love the topic, and I don't blame you guys. I love <clears throat> to talk about him, and we will definitely have to do a part two. Cool. I got so many good responses, people saying thank you for, you know, setting my mind straight a little bit on what actually is happening and that, you know, a lot of people are afraid that the world's just going to explode or there's right. going to be one big nuclear bomb or whatever, you know. Right. Uh, so I had a few people tell me thank you. It, it calmed them down. Cool. So we're hoping to do that more with this episode today, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah. And then I have one thing I wanted to read here. This is from a new listener. Her name is Kaylee, and she says, Hi there, Samantha. My name is Kaylee, and I happened to recently stumble upon yours and your husband's podcast, and you two are absolutely amazing. You literally make me feel like I'm not crazy. I have been having high-vibe experiences with spirits whom have passed for about the last three years, maybe longer subconsciously. I had always questioned myself until I had listened to your podcast. The one where you talk about the shower meditation and where you used to feel uncomfortable, I couldn't believe how much I could relate to that. I had talked about how at first with those meditations, I felt like I was naked and I was so exposed to, and the spirits wanted to talk there that it made me uncomfortable. So she's saying that she was feeling the same thing, which is really cool to know that. Yeah, other people have felt that. Uh, She said, since then, I feel I have set better boundaries and no longer feel as if I'm being watched. I know there is so much to learn and I am open and willing for it all. And I actually, when we're done here, I have a reading with her and we're going to work on this. And she's she's amazing. So far, we've been talking and she we had a little recording issue today. And Uh I told her, I'm like, I'm running a little bit behind. And she's like, I kind of felt like there was something, you know, (laughs) so she's already working on it. My husband's being a dumb dumb. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, things <laughs> happen. Kidding. So, yeah. That's cool. Well, thank yeah. you, Kaylee. Yes, thank Thanks you so much for that. And for I look sharing. forward to doing your reading here soon. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's all I have. Cool. Yeah. Well, then shall we hop into episode 62? I think that's a good idea. The fifth dimension. The fifth dimension. We're not necessarily going to hop into the fifth dimension right this second. Not, no, but... not yet. I cool. wish. This was a confusing topic for me. You had heard about it first, I believe, in one of Dolores Cannon's books. And yeah. we're trying to explain it to me. And in my mind, I'm <clears throat> picturing the earth. And then I'm picturing a little ghost earth moving away from the actual earth when I think of moving into the fifth dimension. And that's not what's happening at right, all. No. So get if you guys have the same idea, get that out of your head. Because right. that's not what's going to happen. Um, but doing this research and seeing what's going on in the world and... And hearing some different things, it really makes sense now, and right. and I've wrapped well, we, my head around it. We hear the term shift in this a lot. Yes. Um, so we want to think of that in a physical sense. We do. Um, when it is physical because it's within us. Right. However, it's not necessarily a physical motion, per se. I think that <clears throat> there's a couple things that are involved with the Earth's the earth's axis itself which are involving you know motion yeah but i feel that's a lot slower process yeah this is a more internal exactly thing because we okay so we live right now in the third dimension Mm -hmm. basically um and so we think in the third dimension which means that we only perceive what we see 
most of us don't, well, I mean, we do believe that there's more, but mm. a lot of people don't believe that there's more. They live strictly in this third dimension of what's put in front of them. Right. So moving into the fifth dimension is more about internal, your you, who you are, who you want to be, how you treat people. And mm -hmm. so we will get into all of that. And I'm very excited to do that. Yeah. So first, let me give you some uh, information on what is the fifth dimension. So the fifth dimension is a level of consciousness that we move in. We move into this level after self-realization has occurred. Self-realization is a very important level in a spiritual awakening. Um, I'm going through this. I'm I'm not anywhere near being in this fifth dimension because um, right. you can move by yourself too. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm in the fourth dimension and we'll get into the differences but one of the things that's happened in this fourth dimension is that self-realization is that understanding of okay i am this little itty bitty tiny peon in this mm -hmm. big world you know yeah i have issues i have to deal with i am not perfect mm -hmm. it, it, it's all of that you have to be able to open yourself up to that and that's very difficult right i think what a great phrase that i first heard from you wherever you got it from um, that kind of summed that up for me where I felt like I had, it wasn't just a spiritual awakening. It was now, okay, I've been shown enough to be convinced that there's much more to life than this body. Yes. It was then after that into this where you shared, uh, realizing that I am not human having a spiritual experience. I'm a spirit having a human experience. Bingo. And that kind of really summed <clears throat> that up for me. Yeah. And sometimes, honestly, which is part of our lesson here, I feel like is that that fourth dimension can be a daily process. It is. It can be a day-to-day -day process. It of, is. It's easy for me to kind of slip back into the third dimension mm -hmm. and sort of feel like I'm just sort of this body walking yeah. around, you know, doing following the herd or not following the yeah. herd or whatever it is, but that I'm just being this human body. Right. As opposed to using it as a transport to get me from lesson to lesson. Right. Yeah. We're going to get into that too. That's a yeah. great point because th that's exactly what it is, really. <clears throat> Um, as we had mentioned, it's not a physical existence. It's, it's, a, uh, it's emotions. It's a, it's a plane of existence. It's yeah. not physical. Yeah. Um, each dimension has certain laws and principles that are specific to that frequency of the dimension. So let's explain a little something first in case you're kind of new or, or you know, haven't heard our, our stuff on energy and, and how that works. Mm -hmm. So we all have a level that we vibrate at, and that depends on us. It depends on how we perceive things, how we handle things. Um, the, the, the more, how do I put this? The more in tune you are, the more spiritually enlightened you are, the higher you vibrate. And the higher you vibrate, right. the higher of a level of consciousness that you can get to. Mm -hmm. So you have to have those high vibrations to get out of this third dimension. You can't stay in the third dimension with the mindset that has been given to us. Right. You have to move through it. So like a good example, I think, to share <clears throat> would be you, for example, your gift. The other side vibrates at a different frequency than we do right but if you can change like you're tuning a radio your dial mm -hmm. to that frequency which you're very good at and can connect now but you, at first it was very hard right and yeah. you even said sometimes it sounded like a scratching record exactly. or, or something that you weren't dialing it in so yeah. you've learned how to dial it and just keep the dial there yes but that's showing you're able to change your frequency and now you can hear just yes. like a dog can only hear certain frequencies that a human being can't hear. And I have changed my vibrations and my frequency, like you say, not just because of my psychic ability, but because of the work that I've done on myself. And mm -hmm. and we'll get into that in the fourth right. dimension. But 
it really is a collective thing. Um, my abilities have definitely opened up a whole different world to me, which in turn has made me want to be a better person mm. and has raised my vibrations because of that. Right. You know, it's my birthday weekend. Yay. And, thank you. And I sent a friend $10 so that she could get herself a pizza or whatever. I was just like, it's my birthday, but I don't care. I don't want anything. I just want to give. That's and good. Babe. That's something that comes with this is that you just kind of feel like you just want to give. You don't want to take. You just want to give. That's good. You know? I'm just wondering. That's so awesome. one way that they explain this, which is a very good way to look at it, is the third de- dimension is about seeing. You really only believe what you see with your eyes, mm-hmm. not what you feel so much. Or Exactly. Uh, we were talking about this earlier today about if you're blind, how do you perceive things? You perceive things very differently. Mm-hmm. They probably perceive the world by feeling, by mm-hmm. hearing. But your, your vision, it clogs you. Mm-hmm. It really does. And so that's kind of what you have to get through in this third dimension. Yeah. Um, So what I wrote here about the third dimension is, again, it's a level of consciousness that is very limited and restricted. It runs on core beliefs, things that are rigid that we've been taught Mm -hmm. since we were young, a fairly inflexible set of rules and limitations. Example, we believe that our bodies are solid. Mm -hmm. They're, they are not solid. They, they're really not in this dimension. We can't walk through walls. No. We can't levitate. We can't do those things in other dimensions. We can mm-hmm. because our body, we realize that our body is not solid, right? It's very confusing, but that's a little bit. Yeah. And what's, what makes it, I think more kind of mind baffling is that both of these dimensions can exist on one plane. They, yeah, they all do. So, that's what becomes because then you start going well no that that person can levitate and this person can't or that thing right that person can read minds and this can't right then they're a freak of nature and they're not um you know or they're a hoax they're not frequency right well i think something else that we've been taught too is like that dimensions are bad Kind of like if you look at um, Stranger Things and they talk about the upside down and that's a different dimension. You're basically in the same place, but it's a totally whacked out place. Maybe there are dimensions like that. Maybe. I don't know. Right. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is is positive, is good, good things, you know. Yeah. Break those stereotypes. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of other shows that have done those types of things, too. You know, you're stepping into the new dimension of terror. Not terror. No, Mm-mm. no, 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 no. Much better than this here. This is um, what I would call, and what I'm going to honestly say I believe is kind of what the Bible re- re- refers to as the rebirth yes. of our world and exactly. our species. Yeah. Uh, something else about the third dimension is that everything is subject to gravity. Physical objects cannot disappear. We cannot read each other's minds. And there is a lot of judgment and fear. Um, so then moving into the fourth dimension, this is where I'm going to assume a lot of our listeners are, because I feel like a lot of the people that listen to our show are working on their spirituality. This is something that they're interested in. Um, and they're starting to become enlightened. Mm -hmm. And like you had said before, this isn't a place you stay this fourth dimension. You don't stay here. This is the journey. This is Right. You going from the third dimension into the fifth and you're constantly moving, but you can move backwards, which is what you were saying before. You can. Is this is a constant daily struggle. It is. Yeah. When it first started for us, it was really hard. I felt I don't feel like I'm trapped in this third dimension as much as I was. I feel like I do go back from time to time. But before, I feel like I was way shorter into the fourth dimension and would go way farther back into the third, if that makes sense. Yeah, it was like a one step forward, two steps back. Exactly. Now I feel like I'm much closer to this fifth dimension. And so that even when I do back up, that it's not as bad as it used to be. I don't get as low as I used to, really. If I do, it's probably an earthquake that's coming. Um, so that's the only time that really happens. Right. So, uh, it, it's definitely a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. Um, it really means major change too. But let me tell you some of the things about the fourth dimension. 
this is where your spiritual awakening happens and you start to experience your heart opening. Um, everything within you starts to feel lighter because you start to see what's really going on, what's out there. And what's important. What's important. It's not just the third dimension. You start, you don't know what that means. Like, I'm just learning what that means. But at the beginning of this, you don't really know what that means. But you know that that third dimension's weighing you down, whatever it is, yeah. you know. Uh, let's see. Uh, a sense of feeling uplifted. Manifestation happens um, quicker. I, I think a lot of people that are in the third dimension probably don't manifest much anyways. But in the fourth dimension, I think this is where a lot of the manifestation happens. And it does tend to happen faster. Mm -hmm. um, as I've moved along, my manifestations are easier. Mm -hmm. um, they happen faster or they're more like if they're going to take a while, I usually have some kind of an idea of what's going on. Right. You know, so it's just something is, it starts to open up. Mm hmm. Um, you start to live more in the present. Stop worrying so much about what happened in the past, realizing that your past is who you are. It makes you who you are right now, but you're changing. You know, you don't you don't live there. That's not. It doesn't define. It you. doesn't define you. It's a part of your history, yes. your path. So you can't say it's not a part of you, right. but it doesn't define you. Right. Exactly. It doesn't define you. It it, it really you can doesn't. change at any moment. And really, I think one of the things I've always realized, but even more so now, is that everything that has happened in my life, from abuse that I suffered as a child, to losing my mom, to the divorce, it has all made me this person that's able to help people with those things because I've personally been through them now. Yeah. So if you look at it more of like, this happened to me for a reason, instead of why did this happen to me, yeah. it starts to change your perception. Yeah, I think that's part of the concept of rising above a situation or a trauma, as hard as it possibly was, you know. It's um, very hard, yeah. Yeah. But you know, what I, I've seen this a lot lately is that <clears throat> spiritual people especially, a, a lot of us, if not all, really have suffered some kind of major trauma. Yeah. It's we. A lot of us have had really bad childhoods to one degree or another, and those are the things that I... I feel like we do kind of come here to have to learn those lessons, but also because we know we're going to help people with those things. Yeah. So you have to kind of experience those to be able to help people. This is true. Yeah. You it know? doesn't make it easier. You know, right. I still have leftover trauma and, yeah. you know, PTSD that we all kind of stifle from those right. things. But if you can find a way to realize that it really all does happen for a reason, it, it helps to get past a lot of it. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Let's see. What else about the fourth dimension? Um, you discover that time is an illusion. That one has been a trip for me in this. I think for you, too. Yeah. It just feels totally different time. It doesn't have the same relevance. No, it as doesn't. It, as it did. Every once in a while, I, I get myself caught up in the... I, I'm middle-aged and I maybe don't have that much left to do these things and I need to do them quick and I need to do them now. Mm -hmm. They don't want us to do that right? because then we're living in the future. Mm -hmm. They want us to understand that like, there's a lot that I want to do in this life, right. but if I don't get to do it in this life, it's okay. I'll do it in another one. Or right. there's like, we've talked about, we'll mm -hmm. see things on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's not good enough for a lot of us. No, you know? was, is it, because you made a good point. Like, you know, from the third, dimension to the fifth dimension is a fourth dimension and that is where for most of us you've had a spiritual awakening and things are now starting to move yes and change in your life there'll be moments where they move drastically and then there'll be move moments where they don't they feel like they don't move at all right but in this and it starts from the day we're born but especially in this period when you finally woken up and you're saying okay i'm listening there's all those lessons in that fourth dimension right to be learning right so if we're in a hurry and we're in the future which is so easy especially you know for you if you have dreams and goals yeah you know you're manifesting kind of the finish line in your mind yes but that's great to have that you know and, and i'm even speaking to myself is like have that goal have that dream right. have that finish line but Beware of the obstacles yes. along the way because they are part of the lesson. 
Um, and maybe that's an old lady that you have to stop for while she crosses the road, and mm. she might cause you to uh, <laughs> lose a couple places in line in the race. Yeah. So you might have to work a little harder to get back up there, but that's a lesson. Right. That You're right. And you know what? This time between when you're going from the third dimension, dimension to the fifth <clears> dimension, <throat> this is the time that your faith is going to be repeatedly tested. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you that it happens to us every single day. <laughs> um, and yeah. But I've gotten to the point, like the other day I got some news that I really didn't want to get. But I handled it in a very different way than I would normally. I got mad. I did. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand why it was happening. I still don't. But I know that there's a reason and a purpose. Where before I probably would have gotten depressed for days and not talked to anybody. And you know what I mean? Like you just you handle things so much differently. And that's what they want to see. They want to see how you're going to handle these things. Have you learned? Have you grown? So like these computer issues that we had earlier we have learned how to deal with these and how to work on these better right. to where if that was a test and to mm-hmm. absolutely see, are, are have you two changed? Right. How is this going to end up? Is it going to end up in a fight or is it going to end up peaceful? And there was no, there was not, no tension. No, right. There was no upsetness. There was no nervousness or anxiety. It's majorly changed because right. we've changed yeah. in this fourth dimension. It's, a, it's actually changing. incredible. Right. We're, trying, we're changing. You know, yes. And we're not uh, perfect by no. any means. Even in the fifth dimension, you're not perfect. No, we're, I'm human. You're human. Right. We're, we're all human. We're all infallible. You know, we're going to make mistakes. Going to make mistakes. And even in these tests, because sometimes I know that they're testing me and I know that I'm not, I'm not testing right i'm not i'm failing their test and i might be smack in the middle of it and i know i'm failing their test right um but i know that they'll test me again i know that it doesn't reset me back to zero it just means i failed that test that day and they will test me on the same thing again um because they are testing our faith they really are and so if they just stop there and you quit there then you've lost this this week uh this you know, uh, up until today has been a big test yeah. for all of us. This whole household. Yeah, you're right. It has. Um, so, and kind of like you were saying, you know, within learning all these lessons, and a lot of my lessons were within the third dimension, you know, just my normal kind of yes. being a, just an everyday human yeah. kind of existence. I had a lot of lessons that I learned. Now, being where I'm at and the place I'm at in my life and having, you know, loved ones that are going through stuff that you can now share that experience. And now, like you said, it now sort of kind of makes sense why I had to do that because someone was going to follow in my footsteps and I had to be able to share and support and understand the best I could. Do I always know, you know, Mm -hmm. Because I am human, but my mind is different than it was 5, 10, 15 years ago as yeah. far as its openness to other ideas, other possibilities, other consideration, you yeah. know, um, theories, whatever it is. Just I'm not so easily swayed by one thing or the other. It's more of a feeling. Yeah, it is. And it's very contagious. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about is that like there's people in our lives that we've said, we're not living like that anymore. We're not going to be confrontational. We just want to be happy. And I see those people starting to change. They start to see, they start to get it. And when people start to see you being more peaceful and loving, they want to be more peaceful and loving. And that's what helps us collectively move into the fifth dimension too, right. which we'll get into a little later, but that's moving into the fifth dimension. We're, we're helping, we're bringing people along with us. And a lot of us without even realizing that that's what we're doing. And there's some people that they don't want to hear it and no. they'll go about <clears throat> their way and that's okay. You can't, you can only do so much, but I'll be, I'll tell you that there's a lot of people that have come around that I'm surprised that they've come around, but they get it. They yeah. start to see that it's, yeah, it's I, a like, beautiful world. Someone I actually knew said on Facebook that the idea of this whole movement 
is to reach some unrealistic utopia. And I thought, well, what? why? Why is that unrealistic? Right. Because our perception of it is unrealistic? Mm -hmm. That would make more sense. Yeah. But no, I'm much more a believer in that anything is possible, especially with the energy and the vibrations all tuned to the same, if not similar, frequency. Yeah. Then you want to talk about, you know, movements in masses mm -hmm. and thing, seeing things really change and seeing mind-blowing things yeah. happen because of this, it's possible. Yes. It's not an unrealistic utopia at all. No, it's actually not. And, and that's... It's how it was supposed to be. Yes. I think one of the, the concepts that gets stuck in our mind a lot is that people can't change. And so why bother trying? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you can. But I'll tell you, it is a lot of work and it is a lot of emotion, mm -hmm. but it is worth it. I feel so much better about myself physically in every way that I can imagine just because I've gone through this and I'm going <clears throat> through this transformation and change. Yeah. It is well worth the emotions and the sacrifice. Right. Uh, absolutely. But you have to want to do it. And I think that that's a problem is that a lot of people don't want to put the work in. Right. They just don't. Or you, you in the process. And then, like we said, you can you reverse. Screwed. Yeah. Uh huh. But anytime, remember, we have free will. Right. So if your will wants to reverse that reverse and then go back in a forward direction, in a progressive direction, you will. I'm. I'm being told, like, I'm feeling a message coming in that that's, this is a very important part to remember this um, faith, will, that your faith will be repeated, it will be tested repeatedly, um, because that is the key to this. There are a lot of people that think that bad yeah. things happen to them all the time. Those aren't bad things happening to you. They're tests and they're a part of life. Mm -hmm. And if you keep giving up and you keep moving backwards, it's just going to keep happening. Bad things happen to all of us. Yeah. Our faith is repeatedly tested in different ways. And it's yeah. very hard a lot of times for me to say, this is happening for a reason. Right. But today we talked about, I kind of realized a little bit of the reason of what happened the other day. I feel like sometimes I get excited and I try to rush into things and maybe shouldn't. And I have to have the reins pulled back on me a little bit. Right. And these are lessons to see, have I changed? Right. How am I going to handle this situation? Right. So instead of falling into a deep depression, I realized, okay, what are right. they trying to teach me here? Slow down. Right. You still aren't slowing down completely. Yeah. I mean, you have to remain teachable. Yes. The point that you say, I know how it goes and I know it all, then, yeah. then you're not. No. <clears throat> and, and you've closed your mind off it. You know, and again, none of us are perfect, but if you can recognize the error, right. you know, like... I had a situation with a close friend kind of didn't real go real well. And I was probably on the harder side of, you know, with him about some things that I had going on about some situations. And then, you know, I kind of came in the next day and was talking to you about it. And, you know, Samantha was like, you're kind of hard. Yeah. I mean, I know where you're coming from, but you know, you got to watch that. And it, and she's right. I could have just been immediately like, you know what? And got all uptight right. and upset. Mm -hmm. No, it, it sunk with me. And I sat and I said, you know, I'm going to reach out and write him a text and just let him know, hey, yeah, I love you. And, I, you know, I'm sorry if any of this, what's going on with me came out. But I just felt like I needed to express myself. You yeah. Know? And I'm not perfect. Even communication is hard for me sometimes, especially amidst of other stuff that might be going on right in your life right you know so you know, hey we all We're have human yeah we, yeah we all have moments and but it's about moving forward right and that's all you know um we can do yeah we can't go back and change the past that maybe you even feel like if you feel like that's defines me which i don't agree with you can't change that right what's defining you is the moment right what is your attitude, your perception, your belief, your level of faith? What is that right now? Right. 
and how you handle that situation. It doesn't even always have to be the situation itself, but how you handle it afterwards says a lot about your growth. The fact that you did that, the fact that you didn't get mad at me for saying how I felt and that you did, you know, message your friend and, and that's great. That is such growth. And that just shows that, you know, this is really, it is a growing experience and it is a learning experience. And even when you live this spiritual life every day, that's become a normal part of our lives. You're still human and you still have those times. Yeah. It's it's so don't beat yourself up about them. I do sometimes so I, when I get mad, I'm, I get mad a lot less than I used to. But like if I yell at somebody, if I'm driving and they cut me off and I yell at them, I get, I get mad at myself. I'm like, what good is that going to do? You? You're just getting yeah, yourself I, mad. I catch myself <laughs> being correct. At first I want to say correct myself, but I'm, I realize I they're correcting yeah, you. Yeah, they're correcting. Uh-huh. But I, I realize uh, that starts to go away more. It does. This, this wanting to bicker and fight and struggle and yeah. pull and tug. And you I don't want it. Yeah. I don't really want to do it. I just I want to keep moving in a forward direction. Yeah. Because everything that I'm seeing right now, great. Yeah. I've seen it. So now I want to move on to something else I haven't seen. It feels like a vacuum to me almost like I it's hard for me to resist like I'm being pulled in, you know, mm. and it, yeah, at this point, it's where I have to go. It's like when you see movies of, you know, people being abducted, right. it's like, I'm OK, let's go. Let's finish this. <laughs> so let's go into the fifth dimension, what that is, since that's our topic. And okay. that's where we're all trying to head if we're working through this. Yeah. Uh, So the fifth dimension, and we're talking about this personally, individually right now, and then we will talk about it collectively. But what happens when you are enlightened and you have moved into the fifth dimension? Um, All of your emotional, mental baggage, it's basically left behind. Not that it didn't happen to you, not that you didn't learn your lessons from it, but it's left behind. It's not a big deal. It's not something you dwell on. You learn how to take it off your shoulders and put it down. Yes. And walk away. Walk away from it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some people might say that that's a lot easier said than done. That's why it's a process. Yeah. That's why you don't go from the third to the fifth dimension without right. w- going through the long fourth dimension walk. But it's possible. We see it time and time again, whether it's news stories or there's best-selling books about people that have been in the lowest of low yeah. and have excelled by sure determination and faith. Right. You know? Exactly. Um, There is no anger, hostility, and guilt in the fifth dimension. There is no suffering. Manifestation is instant. So basically you think of something and it can happen if it's Mm. meant for you and you're asking for it, right? Which you Mm. are because you're in the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. Um, Communication is mostly through telepathy. Um, I actually, I've been taking these courses on Udemy. I found them very interesting and I found a telepathy course and I want to learn how to do it. I want us to be able to talk telepathically. I can talk to the dogs telepathically. So I got this course so that I could do it. Um, This is something that it's like the language of the fifth dimension. We kind of do it a little bit. I think we've talked about it with like dinner ideas. Random things. Yeah, for sure. We'll kind of start thinking it and then try to get the other one to guess. And (laughs) more times than not, you guess. You do too. We're both pretty on. Yeah. Yeah. We never know which one has the the thought and which one was predicting the other one's thought. But it's usually always the same. Yeah, it is. It's it's funny. And then even the manifestation part. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of showed myself that a while ago, like when we first, when I first started building the studio. Yeah, absolutely. It was like, oh, all I need is this. Now I just made a simple request. Yeah. And the silly part was, is I'll make it real quick, but it was, I just needed a small roll of that pink insulation. I didn't want to go to the store and buy a whole piece. Right. Yeah. So, and I had a window here that I made an insert and I wanted the space between the glass and the window and the wood that I made to insert, have insulation on it just to help, you know, with the sound. And we were walking around the neighborhood one day and we see this short, small piece of roll of pink insulation on the ground next to this house. It looked like they had done some work and put some stuff out on the driveway. Like, Hey, if you want it, take it. Yeah. So we walked. I'm like, you know what? Just in case I'm gonna let that sit till tomorrow when we come back by. And sure enough, came back by and it was like okay there apparently nobody's taken it and yeah it took it and it was like people might think of that as just a coincidence 
but it was something that I, A, honestly, really, truly needed. You needed it, yeah. I didn't really want to go waste a bunch that I didn't need. Yeah. And exactly what I needed. I mean, almost the size itself yeah. was almost to the T. It's unreal. It happens to us a lot. We've talked about, I think, the dog's ottoman. We've mm-hmm. got a new ottoman, the same one, mm-hmm. just the, the same way. Manifestation is very, very real. But the key to manifestation is asking for it and then letting it go. And that can be very difficult. And where you're coming from with it. Oh, yes. You know, very important. I, I want a million bucks, please. No. no, it doesn't quite work like that. No, it's I more like, it you know, <laughs> I would, here's the thing. I needed a pair of slippers, right? But I couldn't find a pair of slippers that I liked. But I kept hearing, get new slippers, get new slippers. And finally, there appears the perfect pair. There they are. It's like, it, it just, it's there. Mm-hmm. It happens. It, it You can do the manifestation so easily. So in the fifth dimension, if we can do it even easier, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about these dimensions personally mm-hmm. of us becoming enlightened. But when we talk about the the change the the what would what's a good way to put it because it's not the end times it's just the transitional time that's what we're talking about we're talking about globally the consciousness shifting in the consciousness yes now this can happen this is part of what we've talked about in the past couple episodes i think past couple episodes is the shift in the consciousness okay along with the shift of the earth axis mm. that's going to change obviously our weather and it's going to make the seas rise and things like that yeah but with this process comes a shift in global consciousness as well that's what we were kind of saying is that we can all do this one at a time and individually which we need to be doing but as a globe and a global presence it doesn't require all of us right. for this to be possible. Yeah. It really only qui- requires 1% yes. of the population of the world. Right. Which, you know, 7 billion people, yeah, it sounds like a lot of p- people, but only 1% of that yes. is a, isn't that much. And it doesn't mean that every last person on this earth is going to change Mm-mm. because they're not. Mm-mm. They're not. But... As a majority, there will be a shift in consciousness. So let's talk about what it actually means when we move into this fifth dimension. What happens? Uh, All people will be living in peace and harmony, Mm -hmm. experiencing oneness with all life, animals, Mm -hmm. trees, everything, you name it, fully respecting the planet entirely. And I think much more aware of each of these things, energies. Oh, yeah. They're individual energies for sure yeah your frequencies will be in tune more you will like now when we go out into nature we can feel the trees Mm -hmm. a lot so i can only imagine that in the fifth dimension it's even stronger would be my guess um love and compassion flow through all communication there is equality justice and respect for all human beings on earth no more hunger poverty or crime abundance for all uh, and, you, and communication with aliens and um, communicating with the other side easier. Because once you raise your vibrations, you naturally become psychic, I believe. I was going to say, like, uh, that when we were d- uh, getting into the Egyptians and studying that and how we all believe we have five senses. Right. Right? Well, according to them and a lot of other theories is that, no, we have 360 senses. There's a lot of senses, yeah. But because we are so not tuned to the frequency we should be tuned to we can't pick up on those senses right but now we're in an age where you know people like yourself are showing oh there's this other sense and and you know they're very valuable yes we're currently going through this transition time i believe now i could be totally wrong but there are a lot of other spiritually, you know, enlightened people or, or psychics, mediums that feel the same way. Yeah. So for this, we're just going to say that for us, we feel like this is where we are and this is what's happening and that we're already going through this dimensional shift. Mm-hmm. So this right now for us is this transitional time 
which is, um, they call it the end time or experiencing the death of the third dimension because it is really putting the third dimension behind us. Mm -hmm. Um, our structure of, of reality is collapsing. Mm -hmm. It is everything around us is it's collapsing and that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, a lot of people look at this as the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. They believe that this is the end of the world. I think that there's a lot of similarities to the book of Revelations. Yes. Now, again, we're talking about something that's been written thousands of years ago and translated through language after language. But I think my honest opinion is, yeah, it's very similar. It's almost ironically similar yes. to it, except we've got to look at it in a modern term. I did a lot of reading on this and I read a lot of Bible passages because I wanted to kind of see where things could have been mistaken or translated or what I think that the problem is, is that this writing was so old and that their their visions, the way they described them were so different than what we see now that we can't possibly understand what they were trying to say. But people take like the word devil as actually meaning that there is a man with a pitchfork that's controlling you. And that's not what's going on. No, and I don't so that. that's a lot of what the Bible talks about is the devil. Well, the devil is not physical. The devil is in, in all of us. Yeah, it is. It's in mm -hmm. all of us. And how much of it we allow to control us mm -hmm. depends on on us and you're usually tested with that when it's a choice of free will right so in revelations it talks about that towards the end times there's going to be deaths by sword famine and plague that's revelation 6 8 mm -hmm. now that's been going on a long time mm -hmm. that's nothing new um but let's talk about as we get closer let me read a couple of these to you okay because we know that we are probably going to go through a situation with the antichrist okay mm -hmm. which may not necessarily be one person it may just be the government that we're fighting with mm -hmm. um that we need to turn peaceful but let's I'll, I'll read this to you so you can or just a general general um, evil yeah in society itself yes exactly the evil in society too yes this paranoia and always on the defensive yes thank you um okay so this is from revelations 13 it says they worship, worship the beast, saying, who is like the beast and who is against the fight? And the beast was given a mouth, speaking arrogant and blasphemous words, and was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It, all, it was also given to him to make war with the saints and overcome them, and authority over every tribe and people in the nation given to him. So these, this is supposed to be a sign of end times and the Antichrist, what I just read to you. Um, I would like to point something out. Real sure, quick. please. Because we did talk last week about the possibility that our president could be the Antichrist. I'm sure I've got mm -hmm. some popularity on that one, but <laughs> um, it is what it is. We got to be honest, right? <laughs> so I did some math here and next month will be 42 months since he's been in office yeah. and there's a lot going on. You cannot tell me that that man's life is easy right now. No, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So, you know, biblical here, mm -hmm. but then let's talk about what happens after this fight, this, whatever this is, this good against evil that, I don't think is I, I know it's not what people think it is. No, it's a shift in the consciousness. Mm -hmm. But there does have to be this fight first. Yeah, there has to be an end to it. Yes. And that's what we're working for. Yes. I think most of, you know, again, if we can just take the the protests and the riots and things that have happened more recently, remove the looting situation from that right now, because these are separate groups that want to cause problems. Yeah. Whether it's white supremacy groups or just whatever hooligans who knows yeah i don't know but i'm just saying if that is what's going on let's remove those from the equation and just say these protests these people didn't start out being <clears throat> you know aggressive right it didn't but right. it's gonna take that i believe to get their attention yes that you do have to unfortunately and maybe in this situation Fight fire with fire to yeah. get their attention to say, no, 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 no more. Right. Uh, let me read this from Revelations. This is, like I said, after the fight. 
Um, and I saw an angel come down out of the heaven, having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the beast and bound him for 1,000 years. And what we've been told, not just from the Bible, but from Nostradamus and other predictions, is that once this shift into the fifth dimension happens, mm-hmm. there will be a thousand years of peace. Yes. So these are, they, they line, line up. up. They yes. do. They line up very well. The problem is, is it's all about translation. Yeah, because we're talking Book of Revelations, you know, other than, you know, it does talk about volcan- volcanoes and fires and plagues, and which are happening. Right. And they have been happening for some time, but it doesn't give a definitive time that I know of in the end times of where it begins and where it ends. It doesn't give us right. a date for either. Right. So can you read into that in certain periods? Sure you can. But a lot of this really does line up. Problem is, is like you said, the translation of this fight and good of evil in good with good and evil, and we hear that it's gonna be angels and demons right. coming from right. under the ground and angels out of the sky and it, yep i think we're we're tr- we're trying to make this too literal literal first, yeah. instead of metaphorically exactly thank you because it's, we all know that we can't see angels right so why the heck would we be able to see a demon right if we can't see an angel it's it's <clears throat> a metaphor for the good and the bad the yes. energy that's right. There is an imbalance, and one they're going to have to be a struggle before one can be determined the victor. Right, exactly. Um, so let's ju- let's just say that this is this time. Um, we watched a sh- uh, video done by another medium the other day who is also predicting that this is what's happening right now, and that we're going to start to see more and more of this. And I do, unfortunately, I do believe that. One of the things that I look at when I make certain predictions is the energy that's happening with that prediction right now. Mm -hmm. Things have never been like this before. We have never, at least in the United States, had this going on here. We're not the only country that's having problems, but the United States right now is facing something pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And with everything else that's going on in the world I don't think there's ever been a time that we could say that this is a possibility more than we can now. This year has shown us that things can happen so fast and things change like you wouldn't believe. Really fast. And there's things coming out in the news and I think they're going to more is going to come out and more is going to come out and we're just going to start to be really bombarded by everything that's coming out and seeing that we have to make a change. Mm-hmm. We have to. But I know there's a lot of people that say, and you've you've said it yourself, how, because there's so many people, how are we supposed to make this change, right? And how is this going to happen so fast, too? Mm -hmm. Okay, so a couple of things that I read, and this this is really um, an interesting way of of looking at this, kind of like what you were saying. It says, first, millions of people on the planet are now experiencing an awakening, and there are, I, mm-hmm. I tried at first to think that it's just because I'm getting older and I meet more people. But let me tell you something. People I've known my whole life are all of a sudden becoming spiritual and they're right. moving into this as well. This is not a term that I heard in the 70s and the 80s very much no. by very many people. Um, it's now, and if I did hear it, <clears throat> no, I'm not trying to pigeonhole anybody here, but Usually they had tie-dyes on and crystals, yeah. and they were kind of hippie-ish. I'm hearing it from every walk of life now. Yes. And those of you that feel this, we were put here for a reason. Mm-hmm. We decided to come back during this time so that we could help this shift. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, there's a lot of us, I've talked to a few, that have said that they knew that they were here for a reason. And I've always known that there was a reason. You know, I I thought it was mostly with the animals and stuff, which it may still be. This Mm -hmm. part of my shift could be taking care of the animals. Who knows? I could be like Noah, you know. But we don't really realize it until we get older, you know. Oh, wow. Maybe I am here for a bigger reason. And now it's all starting to come together for a lot of us. But yeah. the cool thing about it is something called the hundred monkey effect, which this this is kind of what you're talking about. Okay. It's a hypothetical phenomenon <clears throat> in which a new behavior or idea is spread rapidly by the unexplained means from one group to all related groups once a critical member of one group exhibits the new behavior and acknowledges the idea. So basically, if 
It's like a herd effect. Almost. Exactly. And that everything starts there. If you think about it, it was like somebody had to start this idea and then it spread to more and it spread to more. Well, that's how this hundred monkey effect works. So you spread and you don't even have to preach, you know, like there's right. a lot of people like, I don't want to preach what I believe just being a good person mm -hmm. and just people seeing that change in you and wondering why you're glowing and why your life is getting better and exactly. why you've changed so much. It starts to become contagious I've and they will that see it to me more than once in my life. Yes. Where I've, where I've asked somebody or followed them kind of because I was getting that from them. Right. So. Yeah, it seemed like at some point in our society, it became cool to be <sighs> tough. It did. And, but, yeah, and yeah. I don't know where that happened, but it, it's still going on. And when that becomes uncool and it being loving becomes cool again, that's when you know. Yeah. That effect is happening. And it is happening. It is happening. It, you can see it, especially in the younger generations. They're not like our our parents and, and our generation. They don't want that. They want something better. Yeah. And they're going to do it. Um, something else to remember about this movement into the fifth dimension is that not everybody is going to go. Um, all souls have the choice to enter the fifth dimension. Right. They have to hold the energy levels that exist in higher vibrations now, if you ask me what happens to them if they don't make the shift, I'm not really sure. I, I know that they're not just sucked up by some devil no, or think God you, or something. You stay in that perception yeah. of reality. You stay in, a, in some level of unhappiness or misery, uh, refusing to see that light, to see the change. So yeah. a lot of people might go, well, how does this... How does this correlate with revelations and, and um, you know, in the sense of the second coming of Christ? OK, mm -hmm. and because according to revelations, you know, Christ comes down and he takes all the good souls and there's a big fight that happens on the earth and the good wins. And yep. then he puts all the souls back down on the planet and it's heaven on earth. OK, for eternity. OK, makes sense. Well, we know through science that we're going to get to a point where the human life will go on until it just doesn't want to live anymore. Right. And it will decide when to die. Right. We, our bodies won't die. No. If we're looking from it from a point of view or our belief system as far as reincarnation and coming back, we can't expect the necessarily then based on the translation of the Bible to assume that Christ is actually going to come down right. from a power, parted clouds into the world, and every and he's going to look exactly how everybody thought he was going to look, or right. we've imagined or been told. Maybe he chooses to come back in another life, yeah. just like we all have, as far as we believe. Mm -hmm. And it's our faith when he comes along and either says, it is me, right, or you make up your mind whether it's me which is kind of what he said to begin with or not. Right. <clears throat> he didn't really even say that. He just said, I'm, I'm the same as you, which I have a feeling this person's going to say the same thing. Right. I am you. Oh, absolutely. I'm the same as you. I'm the same as God. We're all one. Yeah. This person will, I feel like, is kind of what Nostradamus is saying is the great one. The great mind. or Yeah, the, the great, great mind. Mm -hmm. is going to come here for this thousand years of peace. Yeah. This, to me, is what I believe to be that. Right. So it's not a biblical kind of fire and brimstone scene. Right. It's more of a, re a modern reality. What's this reality exactly. now? Exactly. So just like Christ was born into this world as a fetus and born and raised up, it will happen the same way. Right. Okay? Exactly. But there will be a great one that comes back during this time of peace. Yeah. And that shift is where everybody decides, you know, it's not like we're all picked up and floated up in the sky and they come in here like janitors <laughs> and sweep and clean and get rid of all if of only, our trash. Yeah. No, we made the freaking mess. We have to clean we it up. We have to clean it up. And that's what the light workers are here and for. And they're trying to tell us you have every bit of power and everything you need to do it, but we're not going to do it for you. Right. It's up to you. Exactly. This is the lesson, the, exactly. probably the one ultimate lesson. 
Yeah. There's an old term, and I'll say it. It has profanity. You don't shit where you eat. That's true. And that's kind of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. It's time to clean up, folks. It is. So before we run out of time, because this is really important stuff I want to get to real quick, is how do we do it? How do we move ourselves into this fifth dimension? How do we uh, find a way to work together? Okay, so I'm going to give you some ways that you can help yourself move into this fifth dimension through this enlightenment process, which will in turn help the global shift. Okay, Um, you have to make changes. It's just the way it goes. You can't stay the same and expect that you're going to shift into the fifth dimension. Right. But the biggest change is you have to be honest with yourself. You have to look at yourself and at your flaws and ask yourself, what should I change? And I'm not just talking about, you know, big, gigantic things. I'm talking about small things that aren't healthy for you either. Mm -hmm. The way that I eat has changed and I don't drink soda anymore and, and I don't go out for coffee every morning and I feel physically better. These things that we eat and we put into our body, they not only make us not feel good, but they weigh us down. They bring our vibrations down. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to get away from that. Um, that I have been overweight and ate nothing but fast food for most of my life. So the last few years cleaning my system up has been hard. But mm-hmm. if I go back to eating like crap, even if it's just like for one day, I feel it. Yeah. My body does not like it. That's my way of knowing that they want us to cleanse. Yeah. We have to look at these things about ourselves and we have to change them whatever they are and it's not just one thing and it's or two or three or four. This is a process. It's Everything ongoing. about yourself, you have to pick it apart. It's ongoing. Yeah. It's teaching us I think really that <clears throat> if you think this is hard <laughs> and I don't mean to sound like a downer, but you're going to keep working when you're there, too, right. on the other side. So they're right. trying to show you that it's all a process and that there is no unrealistic utopia. Right. It's what you perceive it to be and what you want it to be. So even when your work is done here in this life, you're going to get to that side. And you're going to rest a little bit. And then it's going to be, what's my job? Right. What do I do next? Right. Right. How do I get as close to that glowing ball of light Mm -hmm. that's so warm and full of love and understanding and compassion? What do I have to do next to get closer to it? Because it's so amazing. Right. Nobody's going to tell you what to do. You're going to answer your own question. Right. Exactly. And so they're trying to teach us, learn to answer your own questions now. Yep. Exactly. We'll help you. And we're talking, but you got to listen. Yes. You're, what you see in others is really a reflection of yourself, too. So mm-hmm. once you change those things about yourself, you start to see people differently because you don't see your issues in them, if right. that makes sense. Um, and that goes with the second thing on this list, which is kill your ego. Spiritually aware people are kind, caring, and down to earth. Your ego is merely a product of your thoughts and your customs of the society that you know, or you knew, really, because let's put it behind us. Right. Uh, once you kill that ego, you understand that being right isn't worth fighting for, and being the first to apologize and putting ego aside can save a relationship and achieve respect. And the more you do that with people the better you're going to be with people and the Mm -hmm. better they're going to be with people. Yeah. Ego is a killer. It is a killer. And everything that you do basically that makes you, you know, like, I don't know, what's the good way to describe it? Like those things that you put people down for, that's your ego talking. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, you got to let go of that. You know, yeah. Um, I'm better than you, or, or I should. I make more money than you, and I'm more. You know, I'm more important. Whatever. These are. All, this is your ego. Right. Come back down to earth and realize we're all on the same level. Yeah. Um, forgive people and forgive yourself. That's very important. Forgiving yourself is very important. You have to forgive yeah. yourself for the mistakes that you've made in the past. I think you have to start there, honestly. Yeah, probably. Because that's where you're going to get the best practice Mm -hmm. before you're able to learn how to do it to somebody else. It's true. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, I still beat myself up about things I've done in the past, but I have, I realize that they're a part of my story and a part of my journey and that I can change those things and not to dwell on them Mm -hmm. as hard as it is. Um, You have to embrace your fears. 
if you're afraid of something and you can't move forward because it's, you're afraid of it, then it's crippling you and you're not going to be able to continue to move forward. You have to face those fears as hard as they are, whatever they are. You yep. can't just let them eat you away. Uh, meditation and yoga is very good. Mm-hmm. It's very, very helpful. Meditation, especially um, p- prayers and pilgrimages, traveling, mm-hmm. meeting new people, seeing new customs, understanding that there's a great big world out there besides what we know. Right. Um, praying for people that even you don't know that, you know, somebody that wrongs you. Mm-hmm. Those are all unconditional things. Um, and detaching yourself from worldly things. That, I think, for me, has come naturally. I just don't want a lot of clutter. I'm not interested in, right. like, I don't need a bunch of fancy stuff. You just start to realize what's important, and that isn't the stuff that's made from right. other stuff. It's the stuff that's put here right on this earth, our loved ones. The stuff, too, also seems to inflate the ego. Yes. Because the more you have equates to how much you make to have bought that. Right. And then how much you're willing to do or the links you're willing to go to to protect that. Right. Success is not measured on how much money you have. No. Because I'll tell you, the teachers, they do so much for us more than a lot of professions that are paid very well. Yeah. Um, you You can't judge success based on money. Yeah, and they're kind of some of the happiest people that I know. Most of the teachers I've met. Yeah. That I know personally. Because they're giving back. And when you give back, you get back. Yeah. It, that's just the way the world works. You put out good, you get good back. So a mm. teacher is every day putting out that knowledge. And yeah, it's their job. Mm-hmm. But if especially if they love their job, right. they're changing the world. It is. it is. It's kind of a divine job, which, you know, right. why it was an essential job as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great place to start, I think, um, some of the things that we can do to help us move into the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. Um, We are moving there. Whether we see it or not, collectively, we're moving there. There's more light workers on this planet now than there's ever been. There's more people spreading this than than ever. And It's like already been written in the stars. It's going to happen. Yeah. I think it's just sort of how much do you want to fight it? Right. Um. This year, we're only halfway through it, and it's been tough. Yeah. And you can look back at it, and you can say, this sucked. Or you can look back at it, and you can say, this changed us. This changed me. It changed our world. And we're going to keep letting it move us forward. We're learning more about each other. We're changing certain things. Yeah, bad things are happening, and they are trying to separate us. And, you know, we have to to social distance and whatnot. But that honestly doesn't matter because our consciousness collectively, we don't need to be within six feet of each other to talk. You know, it's all teaching us how to remotely be more spiritual with people too. I think, I think this period's going to get tougher. Honestly, I I think this isn't over. No, by Um, any means. And like a lot of things in this world, unfortunately, For some reason, humans have to prove that it's got to get worse before it can get better. Right. So I do think it's going to get a little worse and a little bit mind blowing. Yeah. Over the next probably year. Yeah. Or six months. At least six months. Um, Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of just wow, like whoa. Yeah. (laughs) But you know what? It's necessary, and it 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 is necessary for the change. And please don't be scared by any of the things we're saying, because a lot of what we're going to see, we feel, is not going to affect the average person necessarily. Like, it won't affect you any more than how this already has. If Mm. this has affected you greatly, then it probably will still continue. But if, like, you're at us and you're just trying to stay home and stay out of the drama and out of harm's way, it should not affect you. The world is not going to blow up or anything like that. You know, are we going to see fires? Well, we already have in the looting. Are we going to see earthquakes? Well, we already are. And we've already mm-hmm. seen famine. And we already see all of these things that the Bible tells us that we're going to see and that Nostradamus tells us that we're going to see. But we're going to start to see, I feel, uh, an awakening. Mm-hmm. And so, but we have to hit rock bottom before that awakening. And we haven't hit it yet. Exactly. We will get there and we will all be okay in the process. But those light workers, we this is our time. This is when we have to do our job. This is what we're here for. So light work away. 
Yeah. Let's move us into this fifth dimension and get out of this nightmare of a third dimension that yeah. we're stuck in because it sucks. Bust out your lightsabers. Start <laughs> slicing some evil. Use the force. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just couldn't say it better. That's my episode. Cool. That was a good one. Bravo. <laughs> I, yeah, you too. It was I good. liked it. That was, uh, at first, when I started putting it together, I was overwhelmed and didn't understand much about it. But when you start to become more spiritually enlightened and you're connected to the other side, it's almost like you have a built-in teacher. Mm -hmm. And when you start reading something that you don't really understand, they have this way of breaking it down for you and mm -hmm. giving you other tips and helping you understand it better. And so that's really been a part of this last week for me, yeah. is letting them kind of teach me about this. And we're getting there. It's a topic that might require looking at under two different lights yeah you know so that's what i try to see it from a couple different points of view or you know ones we can pull from right i guess so and you know it's it's hard for me to talk about like what i see for the future and the predictions because i don't want to scare people and you know there's always that possibility that what i'm seeing is not right now that it happens later but i can tell you that if i'm here talking about what i feel and that i i feel more I'm pretty certain on that because I wouldn't get on the show and talk about it if I wasn't. Right. So just be safe. Um, suggest it if you don't have to travel, probably a good idea. Just, yeah. Just stay around where you are and let's just get through the rest of this year. Yeah. My suggestion. Good advice. I think so. So. Cool. That's well, it. Before we say goodbye to all of our friends, <laughs> do you want to share your page? Yes. Uh, my website is Samantha Jones Psychic Medium dot com. You can find everything you need there. My email, you can set up an appointment, whatever you need. Nice. And you? Uh, if you like the art, D Jones Art Collection dot com, uh, at D Jones Art Collection for Facebook and Instagram, and Gypsy Brown dot com for the web, at Gypsy Brown Music for Instagram, and at Gypsy Brown Band for Facebook. The web is under construction, finally. Yay. So there's really nothing there except the front page, but we're working, we're working on that. We're working on it. New music. Uh, I think we're pretty close to finishing the first song off what will be a record at some point, a full record. And it sounds wonderful to all the guys if you listen to this. Wonderful job. Yes. And I'm very honored to be in the presence of all of you. Um, so thank you. It's sounding exquisite. So I'm excited about that. Me too. And we're coming along. So Yay. live, I don't know what to say about that yeah, anymore. Yeah, we just so. got to go with the flow, unfortunately, <sighs> you know. But like I said last week, you're probably about two or three months and and we'll be releasing the first song. So Yay. we're excited. We are. And that's all I got. Well, wonderful. Cool. Well, we hope everybody got something out of this and enjoyed this week's episode. We do. Um and you maybe go out there this week and see if you can start moving yourself into the fifth dimension. That would be great. And share with us how you're doing that. Yeah, please. I'd love to hear that. Yes. We both would. Um, and we hope you guys have a great week. And until next week, peace, peace and love. love.